everyone, I'm Bruce Hitchin, and this is Center Lane. Today, we're at the home of Troy Cooper. Now, Troy has a beautiful 1933 Riley. This car is amazing. Uh, he had bought the car from someone in England. He had it shipped over to Canada, and uh, he is keeping this car in meticulous condition. Um, the car was already restored when he got it, but uh, he looks after it and he has a mechanic that we're going to speak to as well and find out all of the things that need to go into keeping this car roadworthy. Now, if you like this episode, then please subscribe to my channel. Right now, let's take a look at the car. I, I was open to, uh, to a, a pre-war car in, in nearly any condition, providing it was repairable or, or, or potentially restorable. Um, this particular car was fortunate where a, a significant amount of the, uh, the, the, the work was previously done uh, to a very high degree of quality and attention to detail by the previous owners. You know, when I was 15, I'd saved up my uh, paper route money and uh, had the opportunity to buy a uh, barn find uh, old British uh, Sunbeam Alpine that I uh, uh, then subsequently worked on restoring uh, through uh, you know 15, 16 years of age and uh, you know became my first car and uh, I enjoyed that experience, that hands-on um, understanding of what made the car run and work, all the details surrounding that and. Uh, and uh, that kind of fed into and, and developed my passion for, for uh, that, the experience of driving and the appreciation that, that I received on the road from others with, with uh, an older car and, and you know, the maintenance and the, the care and, uh, of, of those cars. So I purchased this one when I was about 19 years old and um, I've had it ever since. And uh, it has been a, uh, you know, something that I've really enjoyed and it's still uh, drives like a drives like a dream, and it was truly built for you know country back roads. And uh, what's really uh, amazing now is my two uh, my two boys uh, regularly and routinely uh, drive drive that car. So I can envision and see myself when I was exactly his age driving the very same car. And uh, so it's been neat to to watch that entire uh, cycle occur. I, I have an appreciation for for all cars. My uh, one of my uh, Earlier cars also was you know an American muscle car that I uh, enjoyed quite a bit and it was uh, it was a force to be reckoned with for sure and then it really I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed that side of it and I've you know many friends have got a, a wide variety of, of European and domestic cars but uh, my exposure interests and opportunities have always kind of lent themselves back to uh, back to British cars that allowed me to start to kind of really define you know the Holy Grail or what what I was really uh, deep down passionate about with uh, with these cars and what I was pursuing which was the uh, the the ultimate visceral driving experience the uh, the uh, the gentleman's racer the um, something that kind of really brought back the origins of of, of driving and uh, what it meant to to experience that um, as, I, as I began to kind of develop and refine my my appreciation and desire to kind of uh, acquire a pre-war car. Um, you know, that began, you know, years of research and, you know, pre predominantly looking online, but also at the various, uh, you know, all British field meets and, uh, um, you know, there were a number of, uh, of owners uh, in the Lower Mainland, uh, both here and, of course, uh, in Seattle as well, uh, that had these, some of these vintage pre-war cars. And so I would, I was finding myself paying more and more and closer attention to these cars when I would see them and learning about them and understanding kind of what made them tick and appreciating the, um, the, uh, the mechanics and the, the, you know, how they were manufactured and built and maintained and owned. I was fortunate with this particular car through a, an extensive amount of research. Uh, this one became available in the UK and, uh, and I worked with the, um, the, the seller and the, uh, the company that he had uh, brokered the car through and um, uh, through uh, multiple conversations with them. 
uh, decision was made to uh, to purchase the car and import it to Canada. Surprised at the time to to hear of a uh, of a unanticipated delay by the UK government, as they wanted to um, review the purchase and ensure that the car didn't hold any value from a from a heritage perspective. So they uh, stopped me from exporting it for a period of time until they finished their review and then they they released it. I was pretty happy when I first uh, got my hands on the car. There wasn't a lot of work significantly to, to do to the car, other than just simply uh, a slow, methodical process of dismantling, rebuilding, and uh, fine-tuning. A lot of the basic maintenance and general understanding of, of the car itself, I, I, I do myself, but uh, in most cases, um, you know, I definitely uh, consult. Um, and an expert uh, master mechanic who does help with the uh, the finer details of the, uh, the particularly the engine the drivetrain uh, the aspects of the car where uh, you know um, I don't want to take a chance or an unnecessary risk. I was a diagnostician in the regular world for years and years and years working on your average everyday cars. Um, a fully certified mechanic but I specialized in doing everything no one else wanted to do so that was that was how i kind of I, I always find those problems interesting and intriguing people would come and say my car's had this problem for a long time no one else can seem to fix it and i'd be like well somebody's got to be able to fix it it's an interesting role on this car because my technical experience comes in uh, but troy has a lot of knowledge so it's really fun to work with him and so now I work on some of the rarest cars in the world and uh, I always find it fun because it's unpacking something new every time. I work on a lot of uh, old Ferraris or I, it was mostly European that I was doing for a long time, uh, German and Italian and English stuff. Uh, Burton has been uh, instrumental in, in uh, working with me uh, with this car to, uh, to maintain it and to uh, have it operational and uh, on the road uh, on a regular basis. This is called a 14.6. Six, 14 was the horsepower rating and 6 was the amount of cylinders. Now the horsepower rating was only a taxable horsepower rating, so it actually doesn't have 14 horsepower. Now this engine would probably be producing um, upwards of 100 to 120 horsepower. Back in the day, it may have been in the 60, 70 horsepower range. So this, this engine has dome pistons installed. As soon as you start raising compression ratio from the very low compression ratios these engines would have had back in the day, um, modern fuel, you're able to increase compression ratio significantly and you get a lot of power gains from that. And then we have the dual SU carbs, like you said, they're interesting and very simple carburetor and they work great for a lot of cars like this. We looked up the RPM range on it and actually for the day, this is a 4,000 plus RPM motor, which is quite high. And I see, which I find interesting, it comes with spare spark plugs and things. Now, is that an indication of the time that these parts failed regularly? These cars, the races were typically a little bit longer. They would have done sometimes 24 hour races, sometimes even longer. And during that time period, Fouled spark plugs were not uncommon. The amount of combustion that would go by the rings back in these days too would contaminate your oil. So you'd have to make sure that your oil was fairly clean in these motors. They had softer bearings. Oil was a really important part to be able to change while you go and change often because they had um, a lot of contamination issues. It's a big drum brake system. So it's got shoes in it like you would see in a drum brake system, but instead of a wheel cylinder pushing it out, there's a cam that gets pulled by a cable. And there's a pulley system that goes under the car that runs the cables to the centralized point there. So you push the brake pedal and the brake pedal pulls all the cables. And the cables are, they're like bicycle cables, except 10 times thicker <laughs> so they're big thick cables but uh, you apply the you apply the brakes it pulls a cam and that cam uh, separates the drums or sorry separates the shoes 
and then and uh, applies it to the drum and slows the car down. Like this transmission, you actually move the gears into place. So um, the shifting mechanism physically moves the gear. Today's transmissions, manual transmissions, use synchronizers, so you're not actually moving any gears. The gears are all in place, and you move a collar that locks the gear to a shaft. So this wasn't that way. This was you move a gear into position, and now the, the drive goes through uh, a different gear set. Um, so the car, of course, uh, it has a foam-filled uh, foam fuel tank uh, in, the, in the back, but adjacent to that, it's also got, um, it's also got a storage area, which, uh, of course, uh, has got anything that we need for traveling, tools, uh, tonneau cover, and, of course, uh, you know, um, copper uh, leather hammer for removing the, uh, the, the knock-on hubs there as well as uh, different tools and accessories for what may, be, uh, what may be required for general operations of the car. For, for me, the, the, the car is unique. It is um, simplified in its industrial design and its mechanics. Shape, form, and function is, is as close to perfect in, in my perception as, as, as a car can get. So the car in itself is, is everything that I've always wanted to experience driving. It's, it's that freedom, that uh, the freedom of, of being in a, an open-wheeled pre-war race car as someone could ever dream or hope to be in. You know, it is a challenge to, to drive, it is a challenge to take out, it's a risk, but it's also a, a responsibility to show uh, people what these cars were and, and what the experiences are, and hoping that there remains an interest and a passion that does extend to the next generation. And uh, so these cars will find a home and, and a steward uh, beyond me for future ownership of not just this car, but others like them.